All right, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Taiyun Chi. I just joined Rice CC in January, and uh, I'm directing uh, Rice Integrated Systems and uh, Electromagnetics Lab, Rice Lab. So as its name suggested, I'm working on silicon-based integrated circuits and systems for a variety of applications, including uh, wireless communication, sensing, and uh, healthcare. Okay, so today I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about uh, antenna and electronics co-design. So first of all, I will give you an introduction about why we want to break the boundary between antenna and electronics. Okay, then I'll show you three application examples, okay, to prove uh, what are the advantages of doing this. Okay, we will look at direct on antenna power combining, on antenna load modulation, and uh, simultaneous transmit and receive applications. And uh, finally, uh, I will conclude my presentation uh, and hope convince you that uh, we will push the performance boundary of the limit wave systems by using uh, antenna electronics co-design. Okay, so uh, a wireless transceiver typically consists of two parts, okay? So we have uh, the electronic circuits part to generate and detect radio signals and interface with uh, digital baseband, okay? At the same time, we have an antenna, okay? So antenna take care of uh, signal radiation and the wireless transmission and reception. Okay, so the figure on the right shows actually a 28 gigahertz phase array module, transceiver module from IBM for uh, 5G applications. So on the front side of the board, we have the electronic components, okay? Amplifiers, uh, mixers, and uh, filters, for example. And on the right side, at the back side of, uh, of, of the uh, PC board, we have the antenna array. Okay. So uh, conventionally, antennas and electronics, they are really designed as two separate and distinct domains, and they only talk to each other over a conventional 50 ohm interface. So which means that from a circuit designer perspective, okay, circuit designer just think antenna, antenna as a pure 50 ohm load at the frequency of interest. For antenna designer, okay, so uh, let's say a wireless transmitter or a wireless power amplifier device is nothing more than a, a power source with a 50 ohm source impedance. Okay, so and this uh, 50 ohm impedance, a 50 ohm interface actually creates a lot of troubles. And in this particular example, okay, we have a uh, antenna uh, directly connected to a PA. Okay, most of the conventional antennas they are single feed antennas, which means they only have a single feed point over here. And uh, a lot of antennas, their intrinsic impedance is not 50 ohm. For example, a dipole antenna, its impedance is 77 ohm in the air with some imaging part, which meaning that we have to have a passive impedance matching network to transform the antenna intrinsic impedance to 50 ohm. And because this network is passive, it's, it's lossy, okay, it's uh, decreased the total output power delivered to the air and it decreased our transmitter efficiency. But the good news is that, okay, so the antenna far field radiation characteristics are fully determined by the current distribution on the antenna, okay? So if we fix the current or voltage distribution on the antenna, we can get our desired far field radiation characteristics. And actually this suggests the possibility of breaking a conventional single field antenna into multiple electronic feeds and directly coupled to the circuits, okay? And by doing this, we have a lot of flexibility to control the current or voltage distributions directly on the antenna. Okay? And this will lead to several unique advantages. So let's, the first advantage is we can achieve now a very high efficiency direct on antenna power combining. And let's take a look at how it works, okay? So this figure, subfigure A, shows a conventional uh, slot antenna Basically, we have a ground plane, and we have a very thin slot on the ground plane. If you drive this slot using a water source, this will radiate. So if the total length of the slot happens to be a half wavelength, it will form a voltage distribution, a standing wave voltage distribution on the slot, and this voltage distribution follows a sinusoidal function, okay? So what if, okay, what if we replace this single feed antenna driving point using two identical voltage sources? And by doing this and scale the amplitude of the driving signal, we can actually achieve the same voltage distribution on the slot antenna, okay? If these two antenna, they have the same voltage distribution, they will have the same far field pattern, they will radiate the same amount of, of power, okay? And which is, shown, which is shown in this equation, okay? So uh, this is, so why this is important, okay? 
So this actually suggests us to combine the power of these two electronic feeds directly on the antenna without using any passive power combiners. At radio frequency or millimeter frequency, typically we rely on a, a sort of power combiners to combine the power, which is lossy and uh, decrease the efficiency. Okay, so we can also develop a circuit model okay, to model the behavior of this antenna. In this circuit model, we have two ideal transformers. The term ratio is M to one. M is actually related with where we place this antenna feed. Okay, and from this circuit model, we can see that the power from the feed one and the feed two, they are directly uh, combined on the antenna. And this concept can be extended to other types of antenna as well. And in this example, we have a square, uh, a square loop antenna and the total, uh, the total uh, length of the square loop is one wavelength at the center frequency. So in a conventional single feed antenna, we have a, uh, we have a, a current peak at the feeding location and we have our, another current peak at the other side of the loop. Okay, so what happens if we break the loop and insert another current source? Based on symmetry, this two feed antenna will have exactly same current distribution on the antenna and these two antennas will rate it the same amount of upper power. And also we can develop a circuit model to model its behavior. The only difference between this model and the previous model is that uh, we have a serious power combining network because of the duality between current and voltage. Okay, so following this very simple concept, uh, we designed a, a, a chip uh, which is a, a 60 gigahertz on-chip linear radiator consists of 16 unit power amplifiers together with a multi-feed slot antenna directly on the chip. So at 60 gigahertz, the on-chip wavelength is only 2.5 millimeter. So this actually enables the possibility of integrated antenna directly on the chip. And the, this chip is fabricated in a global foundry's 45 nanometer CMOS process and uh, we flip chip package the chip to a, a printed circuit board uh, in the measurement. Okay, so in the measurement we have observed the maximum effective rate of a power of a 31 point, a 33 dBm, which is about two watts in the linear scale. Okay, so this is actually even higher than uh, uh, most of our Wi-Fi devices. And uh, comparing state-of-the-art uh, hardware, uh, power generation hardware at 60 gigahertz we really achieve more than three times higher of power with a very high efficiency. Okay. And this is mainly due to that we get rid of the loss from the passive combiners and we directly combine, every, uh, combine all the power directly on the antenna. And, uh, we, uh, and uh, by doing this, we are actually able to break the trade-off between the efficiency and the power of our transmitter. As we can see from this figure, most of the power generation designs their efficiency start to drop at higher power level. Okay, so we just show uh, we, uh, we just show you that uh, the energy efficiency at the peak of power can be enhanced through uh, direct on antenna power combining. But how about the efficiency at the power backup? Okay, we know that modern uh, communication uh, tends to use high order quartz amplitude modulations or uh, or OFDM, OFDM signals uh, to increase the communication throughput. Okay. All these signals will have a high peak to average power ratio. Okay. Let's say from this figure, this is actually the probability density function of a 64 quantum signal. Most of the time, the amplifier will work in this, uh, the back of region close to minus six dB instead of the peak of a power. The problem is that for our typical power amplifier, it's very efficient at the peak. Okay, so the efficiency is close to 80% uh, of theoretical value. But is substantially reduced to only 40% at the peak of a power, uh, at the 6 dB of a power, meaning that 60% of the power will be dissipated as heat. Okay, so uh, to enhance the efficiency at back uh, at the back off, actually uh, a common architecture is called a Doherty power amplifier, and this is proposed by William Doherty back in 1936. Okay, so let's take a look how this one works. So in this Doherty architecture. We have a main tube, vacuum tube. At that time, the transistor uh, were not uh, uh, invented yet. So we have a vacuum tube as our main uh, amplifier. At the same time, we have an auxiliary voltage mode uh, hyperstatical source. Okay, so what happens is that at the small signal region, this voltage source is turned off, so it is short to ground. And only this current amplifier is supplying the current to the load, which is 2R. Okay, 
So the voltage swing at this node is gradually built up, and the impedance seen by the amplifier is 2R uh, as a constant value. When the voltage swing at this node me, uh, hits the maximum value, we start to turn on this auxiliary amplifier. And by doing this, this auxiliary amplifier starts to pump, uh, pump up power to this load. At the maximum, at the maximum of power, both of them will support half of the uh, half of the peak of power. Okay, and this actually achieves a, uh, active load modulation effect. The output voltage swing at this node will maintain constant for the main amplifier, and so that we can have another efficiency peak at the minus 6 dB back off, and uh, compare with the uh, classical class B amplifier. Okay, so William Doherty actually noticed that it's very hard to realize a voltage amplifier in reality because vacuum tubes and transistors, they are all current sources. So he also proposed to use another impedance uh, uh, inverting network together with another vacuum tube, so this will behave as a voltage source. And if we uh, take this series connection between the main amplifier and auxiliary amplifier connected using a series connected transformer, this actually suggests us the possibility of using antenna to realize this uh, passive, passive matching network. The important thing is we really have to have an ideal transformer over here. Ideal transformer means uh, uh, the magnetic coupling coefficient has to be 100%. So if the magnetic coupling coefficient is below 100%, the Doherty performance will be compromised. Okay, so by using an antenna as a, uh, as a power combiner, we designed this 60 gigahertz on-chip uh, Doherty power amplifier, and this shows our chip micro photograph. And, uh, and in the measurement, so this red curve is our measured efficiency. We can clearly identify another efficiency peaking at minus 6 dB power back off. And this is actually very important. Compared with a classical class B power amplifier, our efficiency is extended by 1.5 times. Okay. <coughs> As most of the transceiver, the power consumption is dominated by the power amplifier or the transmitter. So a 1.5 times efficiency enhancement <coughs> will lead to 1.5 longer battery lifetime of your wireless devices, and this is really significant. And we also did a real-time uh, wireless modulation test using our chip. Okay, so this is our chip. And at the far field, we have a horn antenna to pick up the signal. And this horn antenna can be rotated in the E, uh, e plane and H plane, okay, so three dimensional rotation. And uh, we observe a consistent, uh, very clean constellation below minus 25 dB EVM for all the angles uh, between plus and minus 60 degrees. So this uh, basically demonstrates uh, uh, advantage of using uh, direct on antenna Doherty uh, passive combining. And uh, we, j we also want to compare our design with state, uh, state of the art. So as you can see, uh, by using an uh, on-antenna Doherty power combiner, it's essentially an ideal transformer, okay? It really enhances the efficiency at 60 dB power back off. And uh, our average efficiency uh, for our 64 qualm signal is, is more than 20%. This is even higher than a lot of Wi-Fi devices at uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Okay, and the last application I want to show you is direct on antenna simultaneous transmit and receive uh, a star operation, also called full duplex operation. So full duplex means that uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, transmit and receive at the same frequency uh, concurrently. Okay, so this will really double our spectral efficiency and the communication throughput. So if we can develop a full duplex system at millimeter wave, this really helps to unlock the communication throughput for, let's say, 5G and 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi applications. And, uh, but this is a really challenging task because the desired receiving signal is maybe uh, 100 dB lower than, uh, than, our, uh, than the self-interference from the transmitter. And we have to reject this self-interference all the way down to receiver noise floor. Okay, this is a very challenging task. Everything around 100 dB is very challenging. Okay, so we have to distribute it, the self-interference cancellation across different domains, let's say antenna domain, uh, analog domain, and the digital domain. Okay. So in this work, actually, we focus on antenna domain self-interference cancellation. Again, we will use a multiple antenna feeds. Okay. Uh, in this case, the multi-feed antenna has four feeds. We have the top and bottom two feeds 
connected to two differential transmitters, and we have the left and right two feeds connected to two differential receivers. Okay, because of the symmetry of the transmitter, what happens that we form a, a, a virtual ground of voltage north in the middle. Okay, and at these points we connect it to our receivers, and by doing this, we really lead to a high isolation between the transmitter and receiver. And more importantly, okay, this differential symmetry is frequency independent. So this naturally creates a very broadband uh, transmitter to receiver uh, 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 isolation and uh, naturally. Okay, and uh, uh, so this, uh, this multi-feed antenna uh, will support two radiation modes uh, for two polarizations. At the vertical polarization, it will radiate our transmitter signal and the horizontal polarization, it will receive the desired receiving signals. And based on this concept, uh, we develop a system architecture uh, for a 60 gigahertz full supply system. The input is first, the transmitter input is first split into two ways, connected to our, uh, our multi-feed antenna. And the receive, on, for the, on the receiver side, okay, so the receive differential signal is amplified and got combined uh, to a single-ended output. At the same time, we also implemented an analog domain self-interference canceller. We couple a small portion of the transmitter self-interference, scale its amplitude, phase shift, and subtract it from the final output. And this will actually uh, help with uh, a total self-interference cancellation. So to verify this concept, uh, we, we, we made a hardware a silicon chip at the 60 gigahertz. So uh, we designed two versions of silicon hardware the first version includes on-chip antenna, uh, transmitter chain, receiver chain, and also the, anal the analog domain canceller. Okay, so the second version, we don't have the analog domain canceller, so we can uh, characterize the antenna performance itself. And to demonstrate uh, uh, the real-time uh, full duplex communication, okay, so we did the two demonstrations. So in the first demo, the desired signal is sent by a horn antenna at the far field, okay, delivered to our silicon chip. At the same time, uh, we send another self-interference to our silicon chip. And we turn on and turn off this self-interference and monitor what's happening at the receiver output. Okay. So the figure on the left actually shows a very clean constellation if we don't have the self-interference. Okay. Uh, the silicon chip just behave as a simple receiver. The figure on the right is what happens after we turn on this self-interference. As we can see, the EVM degraded up to 11%, and this is mainly uh, due to the reason that we did not perform any off-chip digital domain cancellation. So uh, you, to really cancel the self-interference down all the way to uh, noise floor, we have to have something like 90 to 100 dB cancellation. But we only have an antenna domain and analog domain cancellation on this chip. Uh, actually, they are not sufficient. But still, uh, the cancellation is distinguish distinct distinguishable and the result is very uh, encouraging. And in the second demonstration, we, we used two silicon chips, and we try to establish a chip-to-chip -chip wireless communication, okay, a high-speed chip-to-chip communication. And uh, we, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this demonstration, again, without using uh, digital domain cancellation, actually the EVM and the uh, cancellation got slightly distorted, but we were able to demonstrate a really high-speed 3 gigabits per second, 16 qualm, and uh, 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 4, gigabits, uh, 4 gigabits per second, 16 qualm, and three gigabits per second, 64 quam signals, okay, by uh, simultaneous transmit and receive. Okay, so in conclusion, okay, so actually we have proposed a multi-feed antenna structure by leveraging the concept of antenna and electronics co-design, and we try to actively synthesize a uh, desired current of voltage distribution on the antenna, and uh, this, uh, we have demonstrated several unique features, such as high efficiency on antenna power combining, load modulation, and star operation. And uh, uh, this antenna and the electronics co-design concept will really push the performance boundaries of a lot of millimeter systems for wireless communication, uh, radar, and sensing. Okay. And uh, uh, finally, I want to acknowledge uh, Global Foundries for their silicon donations uh, and uh, Intel and analog devices for their uh, research support. And uh, thank you. Any further questions? So, 
your last example, would that work in, uh, you had line of sight as your, as your test case, obviously, what about in a non-line of sight example when the polarities are twisting and you're, you, don't, you can't separate the two different polarities? Yeah, so this is a very good question. Uh, so actually, this is one particular uh, challenge we need to address for millimeter wave communication. Because at millimeter wave, uh, the, the link, uh, basically the link loss become much higher, let's say, compared with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So most of the time, we uh, currently focus on line of sight communications. And uh, in particular, okay, so in this design, we only demonstrate a communication distance of 0.5 meter. The reason is that we only have one antenna on the transmitter and one antenna on the receiver. So we don't have any beam forming gain. So with the help of a, a large scale antenna array and beam forming gain MIMO operation, we should be able to extend this distance and probably also make some demonstrations with non-line non of sight. 